and the heat will dissipate quickly. In heavier fuels, such as brush and forested areas, the flame and intense heat will likely last two to five minutes. If the fire is too intense and the smoke or heat gets great, the vehicle interior ignites or the windows blow out, with your fire shelter wrapped around you, exit the vehicle on the side away from the fire and get quickly to the ground. If you are not trapped in your vehicle and you have time before the flaming front reaches you, get out of your vehicle and deploy your shelter on the side of the road away from the oncoming fire. Get into your shelter well before the flaming front arrives. Most roadbeds are survival zones and your chances of survival are excellent. Again, always evaluate your proximity to heavier type fuels. Let's talk about building entrapment since we have seen an increase in wildland interface fires in recent years. First determine if the building can provide you enough protection to warrant using it as a temporary barrier. Make sure the house is well built and it is not too close to concentrations of heavy fuels. If it appears that the structure will provide you some temporary protection before it burns down, you can give consideration to using it. However, if it is to be used as a safe refuge area, make sure you leave the door unlocked and closed. The windows should also be closed in the entire house. If time permits before you enter, remove heavy and highly flammable fuels that are next to the house and turn off the propane tank. At all times on a fire line, wear your web gear and fire shelter and wear it into the house with you. In addition, I take a shovel with me inside the house in the event that my engine has been burned over by the passage of the flaming front. You can use a shovel to help you as a tool to fight the fire as you walk out of the area. If your engine is equipped with breathing apparatus, take them inside with you also. Once inside, make sure all the doors and windows are closed. Remove light curtains from windows and close any heavy window coverings. Move the furniture away from the windows. Stay on the first floor near a door or window that is on the side away from the advancing flames and remember to stay low. Be prepared to exit quickly in case the heat and smoke forces you from the structure. If you are forced from the house, wrap yourself in your fire shelter, stay low and find a place to quickly deploy your fire shelter on the ground. A well-built house will offer you protection before it burns down. The flaming front will usually have passed before the house burns to the ground. You must understand wildland fire behavior if you are involved in any kind of suppression activity in the wildland, because all tactical decisions and safety concerns are based on your understanding of these principles. In this section, you will learn wildland fire behavior watchouts. Extreme care should be used in these situations. First, let's look at terrain features that cause us concern as firefighters. A chimney is a steep draw that channels all the convective energy up the slope. A saddle is a low topography point between two high points. Saddles are points of least resistance for winds and convective energy. Fires will push through the low point at a rapid rate of spread during uphill fire runs. Narrow canyons are situations that require great care. The problem with narrow canyons is that the canyon walls are so close together that spotting can easily occur on the canyon wall opposite the main fire. Box canyons are dangerous because they only have one way in and one way out. Box canyons act like chimneys, providing avenues of intense updrafts and a potential for blow-up conditions. Let's talk about a terrain feature that requires special care and attention, the mid-slope road. The danger in a mid-slope road is that you may have active fire below you and unburned fuel above you. The main fire may spot above you and cause you to be trapped between two bodies of fire. Aspect is another concern when evaluating topography and fire. Aspect is the direction the slope faces. We know that fuels on a southern aspect are lighter and we can expect more rapid rates of spread. 
southern exposures receive maximum solar influence. Eastern aspects heat earlier because the sun heats the slope first. You can also expect earlier upslope winds on eastern aspects as a result of early heating. On northern aspects, you will find heavier concentrations of heavy type fuels. Fires on northern aspects generally burn slower, but with a great intensity. West aspects have late heating and transitional fuels. Another consideration in regard to aspect is time of day. At different times of each day, on each of the aspects, we find fine fuels receiving maximum solar influence. When this happens, the earth and ground fuels heat, and then they heat the surrounding air. Note the surface temperature of 160 degrees in the direct sun area, and the 110 degree temperature in the shaded area. This heating of the air close to the surface causes a reduction of humidity and wind. Fine fuel moistures in the shaded area are 8%, while the moistures in the unshaded area are 3%. Eastern aspects peak at about 0900 hours. Southern aspects peak at 1200 hours. Western aspects peak at about 1500 hours. At 12 noon, a northern aspect will peak. However, north aspects have the highest fuel moisture and the lowest daytime temperature. Times may vary slightly due to the seasonal changes. I believe that weather is the most critical element of fire behavior and causes us the most concern as firefighters. Let's talk about the wind as the first factor. Simply said, the stronger the wind, the faster the rate of spread of the fire. Wind causes the fire to increase its rate of spread by bringing an additional supply of oxygen to the fire, and it moves the flames closer to the fuels and preheats them. It will also cause sparks and embers to be transported in the convective column and thus generate spot fires ahead of the main fire. Here are two rules of thumb that will help you understand how significant a factor wind is on your fire. As the wind speed doubles, the rate of spread doubles. Double the rate of spread and the fire line intensity will increase four times. Wind can cause an eddy effect as it blows across a ridge top. The danger for the firefighter working on the lee side of a ridge is possible entrapment between two fires. The eddy effect can cause the fire to spot on the lee side and cause it to advance toward your position near the ridge. Frontal passages are of concern to firefighters because of the wind shifts. A front is a boundary between two air masses. Winds blow clockwise in a high pressure area and the winds blow counterclockwise in a low pressure area. As a front passes, expect to see the prevailing wind shift. Thunderheads are of great concern to firefighters. Thunderheads are violent local storms produced by cumulonimbus clouds. As a mature thunderhead cell approaches, the wind will change and be drawn toward the mature cell. As the mature cell passes over, fire crews can expect strong erratic winds that can blow the fire in many directions. Let's talk about some thunderstorm safety rules. Expect a noticeable increase in wind speed and a sudden reversal in wind direction. Stay out of dry creek beds. Do not use radios or telephones while lightning is occurring in your area. Put down all tools in open country. Sit or lie down if in open country. Avoid grouping together. Do not handle flammable materials in open containers. Stay in or take shelter in a vehicle. Turn off machinery or electric motors. Take shelter in a building if available. Avoid ridge tops, hilltops, wide open spaces, ledges, rock outcroppings, and exposed shelters. When there is no shelter, avoid high objects such as lone trees. If only isolated trees are nearby, the best protection is to crouch in the open, keeping a distance of twice the height of the tree away. Keep away from wire fences telephone lines, and electrically conductive elevated objects. 
If you feel an electric charge, if your hair stands on end, or your skin tingles, lightning may be about to strike you. You must drop to the ground immediately. Burning wildland fuels provide the thermal energy at a wildland fire. Each burns at a different rate and intensity. Always watch where you park in relation to your fuel bed. Park your engine away from heavy type fuels. Watch the fuel loading next to the roadway. Heavy concentrations next to the road may be burning when you need to exit the area. Watch the tree coverings or canopy on the road as you drive into your assignment area. Heavy concentrations of aerial fuels may be a trap if you are about to exit the area. Additional fire watch outs. Areas of continuous fine fuels. Heavy loading of dead and downed trees. Tight crown spacing of trees within 20 feet. Numerous snags. A preheated canopy. Areas with lots of frost and bug kill. Areas with a high dead to live fuel ratio. Relative humidity levels below 25% where there are many fine fuels present. Prolonged drought conditions. Seasonal drying where live fuel moistures are at critical levels. High temperatures above 85 degrees. An aspect with increasing fuel temperatures. The following safety rules are of paramount importance when fighting the fire in the wildland fire environment. An important acronym that you should remember is LCES. It takes some of the most important parts of fire orders and the 18 situations that shout watch out and puts them into an easy to remember form. L stands for lookouts. The importance of a lookout cannot be overstated. They can advise you of developing problems before it affects your operation or causes you a safety problem. A lookout should be an experienced and competent member of your crew. He needs to be able to realize a problem is developing and communicate it. He needs to update the fire officer on any changes in the fire situation. If a problem develops, he needs to sound the alarm early. He can tell the fire officer if the fire has spotted below his location or across a control line or note changes in fire weather. A lookout should also take periodic weather readings with a belt weather kit and pass this information on to the fire officer. This will enable the fire officer to adjust his tactical plans. These are just a couple of examples of things he should look for. Remember though that every member of the crew should note fire or weather changes and pass them on to the fire officer in case the lookout did not notice them. C stands for communications. Communications can be a problem on any large wildland incident. The first thing a fire officer should do is communicate to his crew the escape route and safe zones. Then talk about radio frequencies and backups if the primary frequencies are overloaded. If the radio goes down, have an alternate plan in place. When in charge of a strike team, you will want to know the position of the units, the progress they are making, or any resource needs they have. This will help you know that your tactical objectives are being met. E is for escape route. Have more than one and make sure that that escape route is easily accessible to all, even your slowest person. Consider fatigue and temperature factors when planning an escape route. Everyone should know the escape routes. You will need to reevaluate your escape routes as fire conditions change. S is for safe zone. A safe zone should be large enough to be survivable without a fire shelter for your entire crew. They can be a clean burned area, rocky areas, or water features. These are natural safety zones. Man-made features may be constructed sites, houses, or roadway surfaces. Upon arrival to your assigned area, evaluate your fire line factors and intensities when considering your safe zone. Your safe zone should not be under power lines. 
Vehicles can be used for a safe zone. However, all doors and windows need to be closed and fuel proximity needs to be evaluated. If the vehicle sits right next to a steep slope with heavy fuel loading, then consider another safe zone. Remember, you should pre-plan LCES with your crew. Everyone should have common communications. Everyone should know the escape routes you pick. All tactical plans should be discussed and adhered to. All firefighters should be informed and understand your tactical plan, escape routes, and how they are able to communicate with their supervisor. Constantly, reevaluate and update your LCES plan. In addition to LCES, go back and review the fire orders in 18 situations that shout watch out before fire season. It is important that you are aware of other fire line hazards to watch out for while working on a wildland fire. The first one we will be discussing is snags. Snags and widowmakers are the number two killer of firefighters on fire lines. A snag is basically a dead or dying tree that is still standing. It can have varying degrees of rotten wood within it, and sometimes the root structure is also rotten. Snags fall with little sound. Incident that I was on was in uh, the fire season of 1992, Silver Creek Fire. And uh, it was a pretty scary incident to be on. We had, we had uh, quite a few people, quite a few personnel on the fire that uh, were involved with uh, a fatality. And uh, it affected me in, uh, in a way I don't, I don't think I'll ever forget it. I, I know I won't. Um, what happened was a snag fell and, and it uh, hit a firefighter on the line. And, uh, her life was taken for, uh, for no reason, you know. Makes you sit back and, and wonder why it happened. And, you know, how you could have changed it, but the end result's still the same. 